Hello, welcome to the Legendary Brown Note. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I want to talk a little bit more about the movie, plot, characters, things like that. And I'm going to split uh, the review into two parts. So the first part, same as usual, five best sounding scenes. And then at the end, I want to talk a little bit more about the movie itself. So check out the timestamps below if you want to jump ahead. And uh, here we go. Before I forget, a quick shout out to the Hi-Fi Summit group. Uh, I had a great time during the Hi-Fi Summit. Daily Hi-Fi guys, you guys are amazing. Thank you for putting this on. And to the Hi-Fi Summit family, I just love talking to you guys and interacting with you guys on Facebook. It's been amazing. So you probably noticed in the intro, the BEQ graph is insane. It drops off a cliff from around like 40 hertz on down. And it's one of those that you're thinking, what's going on here? It is, is it really that crazy? And uh, TLDR, yes, it is. It is just an amazing difference that I felt when I had the BEQ on versus BEQ off. And there's a scene later on uh, in this review that showcases the difference between the two tracks. All right, so as always, uh, spoilers ahead, and let's jump right into it. All right, scene one starts with uh, that, <laughs> uh, blowing up the satellites, and that's great. These first few splashes, not, not great. That last one, though, has a nice little uh, low end kick. Here, uh, when the uh, debris uh, hits against the buildings and stuff and clips uh, the statue, lots of great deep bass in the low end. Right there. Okay, to kind of end the scene, we have the whole building coming down. Right here. Definitely some nice weight to it. This scene gets a four. It's our first real introduction to the base that this uh, movie can give. All right, scene two. Uh, very little overhead effects in this movie. This is the few times that I actually had some. So right there, when the little balls kind of fly overhead, and then right there, the plane flying overhead. Right here, we have the these balls kind of flying overhead again. That's about the only time I really uh, recognize or, or realize that there was overhead activity in this movie. In this scene, uh, there's a lot of uh, explosions, but they're just okay. Um, each hit has a nice little base impact on, onto it. Towards the end of the sequence, um, the little balls kind of uh, go after the freeway uh, posts. Each time it hits, uh, there's some nice bass moments there. This scene gets a three. Scene four. This is the battle between uh, them and the last ship. Right here, these uh, torpedoes have some nice weight to them. And throughout this whole movie, uh, there's not a whole lot of weight behind the explosions of these ships. This is one of the first times where I finally feel like there, uh, there's some meaningful base in these explosions. Like right there. Little shockwaves, nice. So the next real fun moment uh, comes towards the end of this scene. Oof, with these explosions right there. And uh, as they're trying to make their way uh, off of the ship, I don't know why they don't just jump off to the side like all the other sailors are doing. But does anybody, is anybody reminded of Titanic right here? <laughs> as they uh, try to climb their way to the front of the ship. Um, so here's some explosions. I don't know if this is physically possible for them to climb up like this, but hey, what do I know? Another nice one right there. One of the best uh, sonic moments in this clip is uh, this blade on the left hand side is going to come off and slam against the ship right there creating a really nice heavy bass moment. This clip I give it a five. Tons of bass everywhere. Um, that fan coming off at the end has a nice nice impact. This fourth scene uh, starts off with ACDC's Thunderstruck and this whole like next two three minutes is pretty epic, uh, especially if you like boats of any kind. Uh, ooh, nice little lights on moment right there. Um, I just love this little montage of them uh, bringing up the this 
you know, once museum into a fully functioning ship. Right here, my favorite part in the scene is when they light up these steam engines and it kicks in with a bang. Oh, this is, that was a good scene. That was a good sound. The anchor drops, very good. In this scene and the scene coming up, the anchors have tons of bass to them. I just really like this shot coming up. He goes to the front of the ship and the waves just crash over the, the front of it. And it's just a really cool scene. I know it's all CG, but it is a really cool sounding scene right here when the ship uh, goes into the ocean. <laughs> That's one of my favorite little jokes. The guy says it with such a straight face. I don't know, it's funny. And it ends with a nice little rumble from the, the Mighty Mo. And uh, I think I give this scene a four. It's epic music paired up with epic action, so love it. Final scene, we have the showdown between the Mighty Mo and whatever this thing is. And um, there's some really, really epic moments in this final scene. For the next two minutes or so, there's just tons of firepower going off everywhere, tons of bass, and uh, it all begins kind of with uh, this moment right here, when the enemy ship uh, tries to uh, track uh, the Mighty Mo, and its guns can't turn, and just kind of knocks against the uh, edge. Right there, ooh, some really nice deep loud bass right there. All right, one of the other things I really like uh, is the anchor sound when they drop it. Lots of heavy bass right there. And as it uh, continues to snake uh, from the ship, it just, right there, just keeps going and going and just sounds really, really good. And right here, when it catches, oh yeah, that's a really, really nice bass. And this is visually probably one of my favorite things in the whole movie. It just comes around, it sweeps right uh, to the front of the ship, guns in position, and they're ready to go. Kinda wish he uh, set the whole thing there, but... Oh man, this this part's so satisfying. The guns here sound very good. They're not quite to the levels of the guns um, from Hacksaw Ridge, but they definitely uh, do wonders here. So all this stuff, all these explosions sound really, really good. And it ends with you know, a giant shockwave right here. Nice, and the shields come down. This scene I give uh, a five. Uh, just the weight of the anchor, uh, the weight of the cannons firing, and just the way it looks visually just plays very, very well into this final epic uh, battle scene. After averaging out the scores, we get a score of 4.2. And here it is on our legendary leaderboard. Word of warning, for the most part when I review movies, uh, they sound pretty good whether or not you have bass EQ. But this one in particular is really bad without bass EQ. I tried a scene without bass EQ and it was anemic. My boss platform, nothing. Even just like regular bass just felt unsatisfying when watching this movie. Highly recommend that you guys get bass EQ for this one or skip it until you do. That being said, I still feel like there could be improvements, especially with the ships blowing up. The explosions just didn't feel like they had a lot of weight behind them, which is weird because like the gunshots felt good. Uh, some of the other sound effects sound very good. When the big destroyers get blown up, it felt like it could use a lot more oomph. So base EQ. This movie basically needs bass EQ if you want to enjoy it to its fullest. More than any other movie that I've played so far, reviewed so far, you can just see right here uh, the difference. There's a steep, steep filter right around 40 hertz. And I just feel so much as this ship is coming out of the water. There's just so much my boss platform is giving me Right now, when I don't have, uh, when the BQ is off, there is literally nothing going into my boss platform. And I'm not getting like the wall shaking. 
it's just a whole different experience altogether. More examples of Basie Q just doing a fantastic job. Again, I was really loved it when this hits. And without Basie Q, it just does it just feels hollow. How much more bass you're getting under 40 hertz. Jesse Plemons and Taylor Kitsch, they are back together again after uh, I don't know how many years from Friday Night Lights. I love those two and the rest of the Friday Night Lights cast when I was watching it. And it's probably one of my favorite TV shows of all time. So if you've never seen it, please go watch Friday Night Lights. At least go watch the pilot and uh, it should give you an idea of how the rest of the seasons go. In Friday Night Lights, Taylor Kitsch plays the, uh, the jock who's the bad boy, and uh, Jesse Plemons plays the lovable loser best friend. Uh, and I think they pretty much play the same character here. And I'm okay with that. I like them as those characters uh, in Friday Night Lights, and they played those characters again, and it kind of reminded me of that show, and they played it well. The second thing I really liked was the Mighty Mo, uh, and it was that battleship that uh, was decommissioned because, you know, it was kind of old, and it's just a floating museum. But because they, made, they even mentioned this, that it's all analog. And I love things that are analog. Uh, for instance, uh, my, my car, it's a six speed. So one of my favorite driving experiences was renting a like 1975 Fiat 500 in Italy. And that thing was totally analog. You got a carburetor, you had to uh, pump up the choke to get the engine started. You had to double clutch the uh, transmission to shift gears. And that was one of the most satisfying driving experiences in the world. So with, with the battleship uh, and saying how it's all analog, uh, one of my favorite parts was when they started up the steam engine again. It was so satisfying to hear and feel the rumble of a steam engine. And just seeing them load uh, the, the weapons and the missiles was very satisfying to watch. And this was all set to the track of uh, ACDC's Thunderstruck. And anytime you have Thunderstruck in a movie, I'm gonna like that scene. Finally, they have this like running gag uh, throughout the movie, um, the art of war, and how uh, Taylor Kitsch's character says, you know, I've read this so many times and I still don't get it. And then at the end of the movie, and you know, they kind of interject these little uh, jokes in between art of war. You better not say art of war and stuff like that. And then finally, uh, near the end of the movie, I can't believe that worked. Yeah, art of war, fight the enemy where they aren't. After all these years, it finally just clicked. But that's not what it means. Really? Not even close. And I just love how they brought it back uh, to the end and he still doesn't understand what Art of War uh, means. So I like that. I didn't like how inconsistent the aliens' actions were. Uh, for instance, uh, who they decided to kill and who they didn't. So right away, uh, when the uh, ships shoot at a warning shot at the alien ships, they take that as a threat and they fire back. Uh, and then they show you throughout the movie that they'll scan you and if you are like uh, not, if you don't have harmful intentions, they won't do anything to you, right? You'll scan green. Um, but then there was this one scene where uh, these cops were driving uh, down the mountain trying to get to the aliens, I guess, and all of a sudden they get ambushed uh, by the aliens. And they weren't really doing anything. They weren't attacking, their guns weren't like drawn, they were just driving. And the next thing you know is when they get discovered, they're all dead. And it's just kind of like, well, okay, I, I feel like there's a little inconsistency there uh, in terms of, of the plot. I mentioned this earlier, uh, but the ship explosions, I really felt like they were really weak and anemic. For a movie that's about ships blowing up and firing, they just really missed a mark on that. There were other effects that sounded really, really good, but the ships exploding, oh, I, just, I just felt like it was very, very lacking. This is a cheesy movie. If you, if you don't know, uh, Battleship is a board game. And they've somehow made a movie out of a board game. So I guess you kind of have to give them props for that. The dialogue is so bad sometimes. And I'll give you these two examples. One was in the beginning of the movie where he needs to get a chicken burrito. And I'll let the clip play here. I want a chicken burrito. Johnny, chicken burrito. -er. It ain't happening. Chicken burrito. -er. 
kitchen's closed, Hoppel. What's your name? I'm hungry. It's not your name. Dude, burrito's right there. It's closed. Too you late. Walk in too it? late, bro. Okay. It's right there. Please. It's too late to eat a burrito. Too many complex cards. Three ninety nine. And it's just like she's muttering under her breath. Like, you know, it's too late for complex carbs. I'm like, come on, like that, it just didn't flow to me. And then the other scene was when they're playing soccer uh, near the beginning of the movie and uh, Taylor Kitsch's character wants to uh, kick a, a, a free kick uh, or penalty kick. And he, then here's the scene. Bronson, you're gonna take this. Mike. Bronson, don't move. Bronson, come here. Bronson, you move one more step, you're dead. Do you wanna die today? Do you wanna die? Good choice. And I just felt like, wow, this is, this is really poorly executed dialogue. Either it's poorly written or it's poorly executed by Taylor. I can't quite tell which one, but it just didn't feel right to me. Finally, uh, for a movie that relies heavily on CGI, and for the most part, it was pretty good, there were a couple of scenes that I really, really didn't like. Uh, one was when the freeway collapses, and you can see like the car is kind of floating down as, it, as the freeway collapses beneath them, and just felt like a very 90s, CGI moment at the end of the movie where the rehabbing soldier uh, punches the alien's face and its teeth fly out I thought that was really poorly done. I was like wow that completely took me out of the moment and um, It was it was not great. So there you have it. Uh, that's my review of Battleship Did you agree with the scenes that I enjoyed? Uh, are you watching this with base EQ? Are you not watching this with <laughs> base EQ? Uh, let me know down in the comments below uh, what your experience was. I'm just going to say I would not watch this movie without Base EQ. I would save it uh, for when you do, and you will have a much better experience. Uh, so, see you guys next week, and thanks for watching.